What's up, buddy? How you doing? This is one of these videos which is uh, hard for me to make. I think people get confused about my stance on the so-called culture war. I'll say this. I totally understand when people say there are certain concepts and ideas that they don't want their children to be exposed to or that it's too young for them to learn about them. Fine. Like, I, I recently made a video where there's a Netflix cartoon where a bison, a non-binary bison teaches kids how to be non-binary. And I said, you know what? I do think this is inappropriate for the age group. I think this goes too far. But when it comes to adults being adults and making their own decisions, I don't really care. And I don't think you should care either. Uh, and so we have this Dylan Mulvaney person who is a trans... I don't even know what you want to see. And influencer is the word they're going to use, but kind of a comedian is honestly funny. If you look at some of the stuff that this lady is doing, and I know some of you are already mad that I'm even referring to her as a lady. What, what, what are you going to do? Uh, some of it's kind of funny. I get it. But then there's other people who say, oh my God, she's mocking woman. She women. She's making fun of women. Guys, making fun of women is one of the funniest things in the world. I don't know what to tell you. If I can't make fun of women, then what's the point? But look, I can understand not liking the person, and I can even understand being upset that she got this famous endorsement, if you hadn't heard about it now, from Bud Light. But you got to put it in perspective. Uh, you got to put it in perspective. It was a the, Bud Light pays influencers all the times to do stupid things and post it on Instagram. It's Instagram marketing. She has an Instagram account with like a million followers. So they said, hey, here's some Bud Light cans. Can you convince all your trans followers to drink our shitty beer? I don't think they were really thinking like, oh, by the way, this is us, you know, fully embracing trans ideology. They're just like, here's a really popular person who might convince people to drink our piss water. That's kind of the extent of it. But obviously this has caused a huge, ridiculous controversy uh, that people are so mad that Bud Light would give money to Dylan Mulvaney that now we have to boycott Bud Light. And that, I guess, is what we're really talking about here today. We're talking about this supposed boycott of Bud Light that the conservatives or the right or whatever you want to call them are going to actually successfully boycott a product. This is the one. And this one, they might do it. I, 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 I'm honestly rooting for you guys. I don't consider myself a conservative, but you guys announce a new boycott every week. Every week, it's the M&Ms are, are uh, not sexy anymore. We're going to boycott the M&Ms. Then it was a Pizza Hut had like a transgender book on their reading list or something. So you guys tried boycotting them. None of them, you guys just can't stick with it. Nike with Colin Kaepernick. You got to stick with it. You got to stick with the fucking boycott or it doesn't work. But maybe you guys are going to make it happen with Bud Light. Uh, but we're going to talk about the fact that so far, no, it's not happening. And the people who are telling you that it's happening, that you're winning, uh, are lying to you. You're being lied to. And that, that that's, uh, let's be clear, that's ultimately what gets me fired up and makes me want to make a video. People go, Vito, why do you argue with other YouTubers and whatever else? And, you know, the, the, these other guys are making videos just like you. I don't like liars. I don't like to see people deceived and misled. Okay, it's fine if you don't like Bud Light, and it's fine if you don't like Dylan Mulvaney, and it's fine if you want to boycott it. But don't let people tell you Certain things are happening when they are not. Now, I just want to put it in context. This is the video that is forcing us to boycott Bud Light. Again, it was a one-day March Madness advertisement. This is not an extended marketing campaign, which is kind of why I always find this ridiculous. It's like, I think they sent these Bud Light cans to like probably a dozen different influencers. They just pick the top people on Instagram. Would it be smart for them now to say, listen, uh, we understand that Dylan Mulvaney does not fit our brand? And we apologize to our consumers who who think like I I could see them almost making that statement, but then they're gonna get in trouble again for not supporting the trans community or whatever else. But again, I find that like like let's take a look. Is this really so bad? Even if you hate this person and you uh, disagree with trans ideology or whatever, let's take a look. I'm hearing about this thing called March Madness, and I thought we were all just having a hectic month. But Mulvaney posted a video of herself with several God damn it, why does it always got Can I just find you can never find the original video. I thought I found the original video. Why does some bitch need to talk over it? I mean, I guess that's my whole channel is talking over videos, but it's like that's the thing is the 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 controversy everyone ends up talking about. It. You can't even find the original video anymore. Anyway, she she's drinking Bud Light for March Madness. It was a March Madness promotion. 
I think there was another video where she got in a bubble bath and uh, drank Bud Light. Again, it was like two or three Instagram posts. It's not like a na nationwide commercial. They're not forcing it in front of you. It, it was literally for her followers. But as we saw, look, a lot of people are really mad. Chris, uh, Kid Rock. Chris Rock. Kid Rock. Grandpa's feeling a little frisky today. And oh. Bush this week became what are you going to do, Kid Rock? Show me. Oh, he's going to light him up. Light him up. I find this an overreaction. I, I really do. I really find this an overreaction. I think it's, and again, this is this, you know, Kid Rock's brand is that he has to be a loud, outspoken, uh, anti-Dylan Mulvaney, anti-trans person. Uh, I get it. I get that's, you know, what the conservatives are into now. He's got the MAGA hat on. I just find this equally pathetic. I, th I find it pathetic, first of all. For a bud or for a beer company to be paying stupid influencers who would never drink their product to begin with, paying them for an ad, and then I find it equally pathetic to go out and do this big, stupid uh, spectacle because you're angry about a 10-second Instagram post. Okay, well I'm gonna get down to the meat again. I, I, I need to emphasize this. I understand why people object to Dylan Mulvaney. I'm not there with you. I don't care. Like this is, it's, there's a million trans influencers out there. She's the most popular one. If anything, you're just making her more popular with the constant outrage. Like, do you guys understand that victimhood is the most effective currency in today's market? The more attention and the more hatred you pour on a person, the more uh, powerful they become. You're, kill you're, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot by going at this lady. The best thing to do would be to ignore her, but I guess you want to go out in the woods and shoot up a bunch of Bud Light cans. Okay. So you want to organize a boycott. There are some anecdotal uh, reports of people buying less Bud Light at bars and stuff, and I, I believe it. I believe that there are certain people who have seen this and said, I don't want to drink Bud Light anymore. We saw the same thing happen with Gillette when they put out that uh, anti-toxic masculinity ad. Or I, I would say the Gillette thing, if you guys remember that, that was a nationwide advertisement. That was a big deal. That was not a simple Instagram post from an influencer. I think boycotting Gillette made a lot more sense. But here's what we're being told. Anheuser-Busch loses more than $5 billion in value amid Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light controversy. Five bill they've lost $5 billion, guys. $5 billion. Look at that chart. Look at it's red. The chart is red. We know that red is bad when it comes to stocks. Can you sense the sarcasm in my voice? Okay. Here's how uh, my YouTubers are reporting on it. And this this is why I get involved is I go, <laughs> I'm not gonna, you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna feel sorry for myself. But you, you gotta realize every day I go into making YouTube videos and whatever else, and I think if I was just willing to lie to my audience, I would get so many more clicks, I would get so much more engagement. Because people don't really care about the truth anymore. People just want a good story. And I mean, I'm not going to tell you you have to value me, that you have to love me. And it's not like I've ever gotten a story wrong. But please recognize that I'm trying to be honest here. I'm, I don't have it in me to be a liar. It, it would make me sick to lie to you people. And I guess some of these people don't even realize they're lying or they manage to convince themselves that they're not. Here's Tim Cast, uh, Tim Poole, a uh, guy. Budweiser stock has crashed. A stock crash for Bud Light. Okay, well, that's 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 uh, a lot. Here we go. Here's the quartering. Stock crashes from trans backlash. Oh, my God. It's, it's crashed. Uh, again, he says uh, the quartering once more. New boycott tanks the Bud Light stock. I saw this one today from uh, Benny Johnson. Bud Light panic stock in collapse. Uh, the backlash could kill the brand. Again, we could see the stock arrow pointing down. You have the yelling. Uh, why do they always put? Why do they always put this one lady in the thumbnail? The yelling liberal lady. That's the sign of again a channel that you probably should not be watching, guys. They're not. They're not uh, good. We got the red glowing eyes. This is a great thumbnail. Look at that. Okay, so here's what we've been told. We've been told that Anheuser-Busch stock, they've lost billions. It has collapsed. It is in the toilet. This is a complete stock crash. And if we go and we look at the one-day chart, we go, oh, my God, down 2.6% for the day. Well, that, that's that's significant. Okay, I'll say, you know, it's not a big jump. That's a normal fluctuation for the stock, but it's not 1%. It's not 2%. It's more than 2%. I'm going to say, okay. 
That's a pretty significant one day drop. We go to the five day chart. Wow. 5% across five days. Well, that's not great. It's not good. I would hesitate to call it a crash. I would hesitate to cause it a collapse. Um, but let's just go out to one month. Oh, oh, <laughs> wait, 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 now it's green. It's green. If I go out to one month, that's well, I thought it was collapsing. A 5% drop from the, from here is not a collapse. What if I go to six months? Oh, oh my. <laughs> Uh, so you're telling me, let's go year to date. She, oh, what a fucking collapse guys. Okay. Here's how stocks work. Okay. I, let's say this. I'm willing to say that this 5% drop might be the result of the news of a potential boycott. It's possible. That's part of it. Yes. Uh, some, you know, investors may have gotten scared. They might've started pulling out, but this was a 52 week high. In March 31st, that means that across 52 weeks, across a year, Budweiser hit a new high of $63 a share. Now, anytime a stock rockets up in a short period of time, and you can see that this is between March 7th and March 30th, a huge $6 jump. I don't know what the percentage is there. Is that what, a 10% jump? 10% in under a month. What a lot of guys do will lock in profits, they call it. That's when you you go, okay, well, we've hit a new high. I'm very happy with where the stock is. I'm not going to sell everything, but I'm going to sell off some of it because I think it might go down a little bit from here. You know, there's a lot of guys who are playing the short-term market. They only bet on short-term swings. They don't want to hold the stock. If the stock goes up 10%, they lock in all their profits. They go, good, I made money on the trade. I'm walking away. I don't care if it goes up or down from here. All I know is right after the big stock move, I'm ready to either dump or pump. Uh, so to tell me that again, uh, from a height of 66 down to 63, still up 6% for the year, up 6% for the month on a six month scale down up from a low of 46, up 36%. It is completely 100% incorrect to refer to a 5% drop as a crash. When the stock overall is up 36% in six months, this is not a plummet. This is not a crash. This is not a disaster. Could it become one? I'm willing to say it is very possible that if conservatives can actually maintain a boycott across a, a three month, six month period, that yes, maybe the stock will crash back down to $45 uh, a share. And then you could accurately say, you could accurately report and say the stock has crashed because of this boycott. Then you would be correct. But if right now you are going out and reporting, the boycott's already working, guys. We've crashed the stock. We've tanked the stock. You haven't. Nothing has happened yet. Sales have not been reported. You're not going to find out if the boycott's been effective until you get to the quarterly uh, stock earnings. Yes, there's some anecdotal stories out there of bars saying they're selling less Bud Light, you know, of like, I don't know, people buying less kegs for certain events. Some uh, one uh, country artist said he's no longer going to stock his rider with Bud Light. Oh, I'm sure that's really going to put a dent in the sales. But guys, this kind of stuff takes months to play out whenever you see. And this is not the only thing that that this matters for. OK, I'm always seeing uh, from these guys. Uh, Disney stock has dropped. This is clearly the result of, you know, the Buzz Lightyear movie did bad. You know, they'll go, oh, we know the Buzz Lightyear movie did bad. Or we know that Disney plus is failing because the stock is down 5%. Guys, stocks move five, 10% up, down constantly. You have to look at long-term trends. No, no singular event is going to play out across a week. OK, unless it's something like the entire warehouse burns down, then you could say, OK, I'm pretty sure that's the reason the stock's going down. OK, I will say it's very possible there's been a 5 percent dip because investors are getting scared. But that's not based on sales data. That's based on investors getting cold feet. They're a little bit worried about the rumblings of what to come. If you really want to make an impact, you have to boycott this thing for more than a week, more than a month. You got to boycott this thing probably for a couple of years. And don't forget that Anheuser-Busch. Uh, let's, let's take a look at their brands. Okay. Even if Bud Light goes the way of the Dodo, uh, are, what are you going to switch over to, uh, uh, drinking next? 
Are you going to drink Bush? Are you going to drink Shock Top? Hogard, Presidente, Legend? They own 50 million beers. So it's very possible they could possibly get rid of the Bud Light brand or rebrand it as something new and probably make just as many sales because you guys don't even know uh, what it, who owns the things you're drinking. Look at all these. Ten Barrel Brewing, Elysian Brewing. I didn't even know Elysian Brewing was an Anheuser-Busch thing. I see that on the uh, shelves all the time. Red Hook I didn't know was Elysian. Golden Road is, uh, is Budweiser. Yo, mm -hmm. Guys, all I'm saying is... You got a lot of these guys, and the only way they make money is by lying to you, frankly. Okay? They make money by taking a tiny piece of truth, which is, yes, the stock has dropped 3 to 5%. Okay? That is a tiny bit of truth. You can speculate. If you're rational, you'd say, oh, well, you know, they could be in trouble. But they don't get paid by saying, oh, they could be in trouble. They get paid by saying, Buzz Light Trans Backlash just went nuclear. Stock is in the uh, toilet. It's all crashing down. It's the end of the world. 30%. They've lost billions of dollars. These people are lying to you for money. I don't know why you encourage them. I don't know why you allow it. I don't know why people come to me and they go, Vito, you got to give Tim Pool a chance. Cause he's lying. No, I don't, I don't need people to lie to me. I can lie to myself if I really want to, if I really want to believe that, that, you know, everything is going my way and my side's winning and where the culture war is all 100% on my side. I can just make shit up too. I don't need a guy to do it. It doesn't help me. And you shouldn't let it help you either. Well, let me know in the comments guys. What, what do you think of these guys who tell you? They, they tell you what you want to hear. They tell you you're winning the culture war. We're winning the culture war. Can you believe we're winning it? The Mario movie is a great win against anti or against woke culture, they're telling me. It makes no sense. Stop letting these people lie to your face. I swear to God, it's killing. It's killing you. It's killing me. It's killing our society. It's making us dumber. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Next week, you're going to be able to back Super Killer, the comic book, coming to Indiegogo. So don't forget to get on the mailing list over at superkiller.org. Take care of yourselves, guys. And, uh,. I mean, Bud Light sucks. I'll drink it if it's there. It's not great, but it's not, it's not terrible. It's not a terrible beer. Bye-bye.